Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I was uh, talking about a new playlist related to 5G PUCSH. Under that, uh, today's topic of discussion is related to CDM concept of PUCSH format 1. So, the main things which uh, you will learn uh, in this particular video is how are UVs multiplexed using different codes. Uh, basically, I will touch upon uh, the GGPP spec as well and uh, what is the reason for doing this um, and what is the main advantage. And how many UVs can be multiplexed? We can see both the theoretical as well as the practical. And uh, whatever the concepts that are related to that, uh, I will cover. Okay. So the thing is that uh, um, we have got uh, some advantage, uh, some disadvantage uh, when we talk about uh, transferring uh, act back information via format one. Okay. So what is the disadvantage? First, uh, if we talk about the disadvantage, then we will get to know, you know, why we are uh, doing all these things. So the thing is that let us take TDD format 4 is to 1, so which means 4 downlink and 1 uplink. So we can form this configuration. So DDD, uh, actually S, U, and, and again uh, you, can, you can continue DDD, uh, S, U, right? So in these uh, uh, three slots or even in this in this can be considered as a downlink slot in these four slot let us say uh, each of these slot can be can be scheduled with 16 uh, different uvs i would say 16 different uvs are scheduled with the pdscs data okay so in which case uh, all of these slots can also have 16 different UVs. Total uh, 16 into 4, we can have 64 UVs, which means that for all of these 64 UVs, mm, the uh, the ACNAC uh, information has to be sent back to GNOME B uh, in the uplink. Okay, this could be in the immediate uplink, or uh, depending upon uh, the different configuration, uh, it can go in the next uh, upcoming uh, uh, slot, uplink slot. So. Mm, what I would say is in the worst case, uh, in the next upcoming slot, uh, we will have 64 ACNAC information that needs to be sent for 64 different UVs, which means that, uh, which means that uh, there could be 64 different F1 format that needs to be scheduled. Okay, so if we are going to have 64 uh, different F1 formats, which means that uh, as we already know, uh, the each F1 format occupies one PRB, right? So which means we need 64 PRBs. So let's take 100 megahertz uh, and uh, uh, in that we have 273 PRBs. So out of which 64 is already gone, okay? And maybe there could be some F3 format for, for uh, which other UVs wants to send uh, CSI information, maybe a few more, let's say another 36 uh, PRBs are gone, in which case a total 100 are gone, then let's say just 173. Okay, so just 173 PRBs are now available for scheduling PVSS data. Okay, more the control information which we are going to send. Um, I mean, if, if we are going to occupy more PRBs for transferring for transferring the control information, which means uh, um, we are having a very less number of PRBs available for PUSCH, which means PUSCS, which means PUSCH data rate uh, is getting reduced. Okay, so this is the main disadvantage. So to overcome this, the, what has been done in PGPP is um, there is a facility given to actually perform overlay of F1 UVs. Okay, so or we can say code division multiplexing of F1 UVs. So we can perform this code division multiplexing. So we can perform with the two things. One is a cyclic shift. Another one is uh, uh, your OCC. Okay, let us see both of these things. Uh, uh, using uh, the specification so just i will get into the specification so as you can see this is a format one um, sequence modulation okay so if you see here how uv of n is the one where we are going to generate the sequence right so that is as per 6322 so just let me get to that 6322 section so th this is where we have the 6322 section it talks about sequence and cyclic op cyclic shift opting so this cyclic shift is the one which is going to make a difference. I will not go to the details of these cyclic shifts and all, 
but uh, here what we need to understand is if we can provide a different kind of cyclic shift for generating uh, um, this uh, RUV of n sequence then we will get uh, multiple orthogonal sequence and uh, these orthogonal sequence can be assigned to different UVs uh, so that uh, the sequence of one UV is will be having an orthogonality with the sequence of other UV and these UV can be multiplexed on the same on the on the same uh, time frequency resource so so total as per the specification we have got to 12 cyclic shift and and we will see how many cyclic shift can be used to, to achieve this orthogonality in practice um, that is uh, the main thing and what about the other item so if i get back to this usage format one generation then you will see that here we have got orthogonal sequence wi of m so this wi of m is multiplied to this y of m and uh, this is utilizing the orthogonality in the time domain okay so so here we need to see how to generate this wi of m and this wi of m is given as per the table mentioned below so this is the table um, wi of m so we will get to know these this value i uh, to be used uh, as i was telling um, we can mainly consider 14 symbols for 14 symbols uh, if you go to this particular table um, for 14 symbols your m dash is equal to 7 okay here if there is a hopping m dash will be total 3 plus 4 is equal to 7 but this is for the first 7 symbols and this is for the next uh, 7 symbols so so, so it's like uh, you can you can say that your uh, this particular parameter value is 7 okay so so if it is 7 then as per this you can see that you will have total 7 orthogonal sequence that can be generated okay so so higher the number of symbols we can go for uh, higher orthogonality six symbols means we can achieve uh, six orthogonal sequence so so like that uh, if you consider the maximum one we can go for a seven orthogonal sequence so, so i think right now you got to know like from where all we can generate the orthogonal sequences okay so with this uh, i will get into this ofdm grid um, okay this is the ofdm grid uh, here what i want to mention is um see for example uh, this particular uh, thing corresponds to one uv right okay we can say this corresponds to uh, uv number one this uh, um, okay since frequency hopping is enabled this is uv one this we need to draw a line at the 50 percent uh, um, 50 percent of the symbols so uv one uv one so this will be uv number two this will be uv number two you can see that each of the uvs occupying one prb and then see if, if we have for example 64 uvs we need 64 prbs so it is consuming huge number of resources right so what we can do is on the same prb okay on the same frequency time resources if we can use a different cyclic shift for uv1 okay let's say cyclic shift number one for uv number two we can use cyclic shift number two then let's say these two are orthogonal then what we can say we can multiplex uv number one plus uv number two so on the same on the same time frequency resources we can multiplex both of them and uh, we can transmit okay so like that uh, how many uvs can be multiplexed as i was telling we have what cyclic shift is equal to 12 right so let's say uh, to get uh, a better orthogonality um, so in, in theory we can use all the 12 but let's say uh, if we are using uh, just this is just an example like uh, i will use only four cyclic shifts out of this 12 okay maybe like uh, 0 3 6 9 okay or you, or you can even consider uh, 12 as well uh, so total you can take four or five then one two three four or five five ubis can be multiplexed and on top of this we can also use that wi of f um, which is an orthogonal cover code so here uh, in the table i was showing that we have got seven combinations for uh, for total 14 uh, ucch symbols so 
out of seven, let's say we can use four combinations. Hmm? Okay, four combinations from here, and let's say in cyclic shift, I will take another four combinations. Then, with in which, in which case, total sixteen UVs. Okay, four four cross four, sixteen UVs can be multiplexed on the same time frequency resource. So, so which means that on a single PRB, I can transmit sixteen UVs worth of information. Uh, by multiplexing them, mm, uh, uh, by multiplexing them using different uh, uh, codes. Okay, um, so in that case, how many PRBs are required finally? Rather than 64 PRBs for 64 different uh, UVs, you just need 64 by 16, which is four PRBs. Okay, because in first PRB you can multiply 16, in the second PRB you can multiply 16. And totally, you can cover with four PRBs all 64 UVs. By that way, you will have lots of PRBs available for the PUSH, and you can improve the PUSH uh, throughput. Okay, in the uplink direction. Now, it, now theoretically, how many UVs are possible? Uh, are possible uh, that we can multiplex. So, so theoretically, we have 12 cyclic shift, and uh, for 14 symbols. Uh, uh, we have seven combinations uh, for W high, so total 12 into 7. Uh, so 70 plus 14 is equal to 84. So total 84 UVs can be multiplexed on the same on the same time frequency resource. Okay, this many UVs are theoretically possible, but uh, um, it will it is it is having its own disadvantage, like uh, in terms of uh, uh, the power distribution across these. Uh, formats and in terms of achieving the orthogonality among these cyclic shifts and all so under very uh, under uh, some uh, bad uh, channel conditions uh, multiplexing these many number of uvs would uh, amper the detection so usually you know less number of uvs can be made overlaid okay i hope this also you uh, got it so i think uh, that's all i had today uh, with this, I would like to wind up the concept. Uh, I hope you got the clarity with respect to how different UVs can be multiplexed using uh, OCC codes and as well as cyclic shift uh, and what is the main reason, what is the main advantage that also you got it and uh, how many UVs can be multiplexed both critically and uh, this one that also you got it and, uh, and uh, I have uh, explained all the required concepts. Uh, thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Please do subscribe to the channel.